All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our session today on biochemistry at Carleton. I'm so glad that you are able to join us and I'm looking forward to sharing with you a bit about our programs and what's going on here and uh, hearing your questions. Um, you'll have an opportunity towards the end of this to ask questions, but feel free to pop questions into the Q&A box if you have any that come up as we move along and we'll make sure to take those. Um, I also just wanted to let you know that if after this session you have outstanding questions or you want to chat with um, one of the speakers one on one, you can drop by our booth that you can find under the academic section at the top of the controls in this AirMeet platform. Um, so we are housed on campus at Carleton in the Nesbitt building, which you can actually see on the bottom left hand corner of my screen at present. Um, that's kind of where our main uh, administrative offices are and lots of our research labs. But you'll see that uh, you'll actually get to visit a couple of different buildings where we hold activities as well around campus uh, when we show you some videos a little bit later on in this talk. And so biochemistry is certainly a very old um, domain of research, and yet there really has never been a more exciting time to study biochemistry and be a biochemistry student. Um, I just want to share a couple of fun things that are going on in our field right now uh, to see, you know, if maybe you've heard of them or, you know, get you a little bit excited about the topic. Um, you may have heard, um, you know, in 2020, we had this really amazing Nobel Prize um, to, given to Emmanuel Charpentier and um, Jennifer Dudna for their discovery of CRISPR, CRISPR being a genome editing tool. And that um, is a really neat technique that's being used in a whole variety of different fields, um, everything from plant breeding to you know, hopefully one day curing um, genetic diseases to being able to develop just basic research um, model systems that we use in our biochemistry laboratories. Um, advances in computing are also meaning that we can do, uh, you know, things that we only ever dreamed of being able to do in biochemistry. So here you can see some really cool maps that are looking at not only, you know, one gene in a condition, but let's say all of the genes in a genome or all of the proteins in an organism and the interactions between them and how changes in one tiny little part of that pathway can affect um, the whole system. And that really wouldn't have been possible without the current uh, computing technology that we have. And biochemistry continues to be so very, 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 very relevant in our society today. We have no end of um, applications where it's important to consider the chemistry of life, right? We have um, unbelievable climate change going on. We have concerns about our environment. Uh, we have concerns about food security. And I mean, we can't really ignore this pandemic that we're all living in. And so biochemistry is a vital field to being able to address and um, hopefully solve some of these problems going forward. And so we really hope that you'll, uh, you know, share that excitement that we do as faculty in this department um, and come and study with us. Um, and obviously, one of the questions is always, where do folks in this field work? So where do our biochemists work? Well, they certainly work in research laboratories and hospitals, whether that's in a clinical setting or, uh, you know, a basic bench research discovery type setting. Um, Ottawa is a big government town, but, you know, we don't only have government opportunities throughout, uh, we have government opportunities throughout um, Canada and across the world, really. So we have agencies like Health Canada or National Research Council, um, CFIA, the Canadian Food Inspection Agency, they all um, hire and um, employ biochemists. There's also lots of non-governmental organizations where biochemists can work. Uh, industry here on our screen, you can see a few different companies um, that have branches in Ottawa, such as Spartan Biosciences, that do work on things like biofuels and vaccination. And you may have actually heard about them in relation to COVID testing when we were initially looking at rapid test development. 
Um, and certainly our own field, right, academia, you know, biochemists work in universities and colleges. Uh, but there really is a whole host of different um, fields that you might find yourself working in following the completion of a biochemistry degree. And you might have noticed I haven't even talked about some of the professional programs that you might be interested in, such as medicine or dentistry or um, law or even business. And we'll come to those a little bit later on in our discussion today. Um, and so, yeah, just this um, expands a little bit further on some of those career paths I was just mentioning. Um, so those were sort of employers, but what might you be doing? Well, you might be developing biomedical products or dealing with biomedical data. Um, you might be developing drugs or testing drugs uh, in model systems or all the way up to clinical studies. Um, you could be working on environmental toxicology and regulatory toxicology. So how are these compounds impacting our environment and how do we need to regulate them accordingly to either promote or avoid their negative impacts, depending on what we're um, looking to do. Um, certainly tons of biomedical research, both um, you know, all the way down to the molecular level, but all the way up to uh, clinical testing. Um, you see some of those professional degrees I was just mentioning, whether it's medicine or dentistry, pharmaceutical sciences, veterinary medicine, um, an undergraduate degree in biochemistry sets you up well for that. Um, we also have some of my favorite, you know, teaching and instruction. Um, I'm an instructor here in the Biochemistry Institute. And so that's one of the things that I do with my biochemistry degree. There's lots of call for science communication these days. And so again, you know, what your next step as a biochemist might look like are very, very um, broad, but many exciting paths. So a little bit more specifically about our program here at Carleton, um, we have four key programs in biochemistry and they're listed here on the screen. You can see that we have um, a biochemistry honors program which is number one. We have a more biotechnology focused program. So it's biochemistry and biotechnology. We also have a computational stream. So a little bit more focused on the computer science side of things, as well as um, our major program. Um, the key difference between one and four being the uh, inclusion of a fourth year honors project and um, that we'll talk a little bit more about um, our department has award-winning researchers and teachers working in it, and we cover really all the different fields um, that exist in biochemistry. So if you've, you know, if one of those things I described on the last couple of slides really tweaks your interest, uh, we very likely have someone working in that field for whom you might be able to form, um, you know, a mentorship relationship or a collaboration, or even, you know, one day down the line, work in their research laboratory. Um, we also have uh, co-op opportunities. So these are co-op programs where you can actually go and have job placements during your program. Uh, they're paid placements and you get real life, uh, you know, in-person uh, applicable experiences that can be really helpful for gaining employment uh, later on in your, uh, you know, in your career. Um, so every one of those programs that I was just mentioning on the last slide have slightly different course requirements. You'll have slightly different progress through your years. Um, but what I'm showing you here is a course map for our biochemistry honors degree. And so you can see the courses that you will most take, commonly take in first, second, third, and fourth year. Um, you can see that in first year, we kind of cover our basic sciences. So you'll take some general chemistry, biology, math, and physics. And as we move into your second, third, and fourth year, that's where we really get into the biochemistry component. So in second year, we'll have, you know, cellular and physical biochemistry, as well as a cluster of biology and chemistry classes, not to mention stats, really important to be able to analyze some of the research data you're going to get when you're having hands-on experiences in our laboratories. We continue on with that biochemistry focus in third year. And in fourth year, really get into some highly specialized courses. Um, you can also see here that we have our honors project. So this is an opportunity to be in a research lab and engaged in a research project. Um, and that can take a few different forms, which is why there's some different course codes listed right here. 
you can also see along the bottom that we have um, different options. So you get the opportunity to shape your program to a certain extent by taking um, choices of courses within a certain bin. We'll give you a list of courses that you can select from uh, to really make sure that you're getting the opportunity to look at what is most interesting to you. And again, these are things that we can talk with you about uh, later on in our booth if you have specific questions about individual courses that you may or may not be um, interested in. Um, so what can you expect? Well, our programs are really focused on evidence-based teaching. So we're using our best practices, um, you know, known pedagogical approaches that are going to lead to the best learning outcomes with our students. One of the best practices in that regard is experiential learning. So that's the chance to actually learn by doing. And so all throughout your years in a biochemistry program, you're going to be involved in teaching labs. Uh, you'll be taking labs. And once you get up into your higher years, as I said, you'll be able to work with an individual researcher and join their group, collaborate with their graduate students and experience um, bench research. Um, and we also incorporate those active learning techniques into the more traditional lecture type courses. And so, you know, you may have you may have an image of what uh, university looks like, you know, the big rows of seats in the auditorium and the professor down at the front um, lecturing. However, you'll find that a lot of our courses involve um, very active learning. So you'll be answering polling questions, you'll be conducting case studies, you'll be doing group work, you'll be interacting with your peers. So it won't just be um, sitting in your seats listening to someone talk, you'll really get a chance to engage with the material at all times. Um, and so since teaching labs are such a big part of our program and, um, you know, this is a virtual session, we wanted to give you a little taste of what teaching labs might look like in our, our faculty. So I'm going to just show you a quick video here of one of our teaching labs. This is a third year lab. Um, this is sorry. This is a lab where our third year students take their um, biochemistry courses. So that's a general biochemistry one and two courses. And so you can see each uh, in lab station has their own equipment. Um, students typically errors, although right now with the pandemic, we're, we're here, you can see um, the general space, you know, individual labs, um, equipment work and payment that you have at your own other pieces of equipment are equipment that you'll another station to uh, all the most modern in their program and see some ultra So these are communal stations and Using technique. Okay. Um, so as I've been talking about, our students do real research. So we see students um, typically, you know, towards their fourth year when they're doing those honors projects in a research lab. But we actually have a really high percentage of students who also engage in research um, much earlier than that. We have a number of different programs that allow undergraduate researchers um, to join labs and have funding so these can be paid opportunities and I'll talk about a few of these in just a moment. Um, so some of these include research internships and scholarships. So we have um, some initiatives from the Dean's Office or Dean's Summer Research Internships. Uh, we also have some funding that's possible to apply for from our National um, Science and Engineering Research Council as well as some research awards internally. 
Um, the iCurious program is a Carleton specific undergraduate research experience program where you can um, get into a, a teaching lab or sorry, a research lab. Uh, we also have work study programs and volunteering opportunities. So there's so very, very many ways to get involved and um, start getting your hands on experience in the lab. Um, so I'm going to take a moment actually here and turn over our microphone in just a moment to um, one of the members of our program. Um, Urbaz is also the president of our Carleton Chemistry and Bio chemistry student society which you can see right here which is just one of the many great student clubs and societies on campus we also have a more general science student society and the science student success center which are hosting um, no end of activities uh, that really are very interesting so i'm going to go ahead and mute myself and uh, let urbaz speak a little bit about his experience as a student in biochemistry and his work with the student chemistry society or the student chemistry and biochemistry society Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you, uh, Dr. Petit. Um, so as she was saying, I am, my name is Peter Basman, and I am the president for the CCPS, as well as a student currently attending Carleton um, as part of the biochemistry, um, uh, what's it called, uh, program. I'm uh, currently in my third year. And a little quick word about the, the CCPS. So we are basically a society organized by undergraduate and graduate students um, with the goal of working together to create a community between chemistry and biochemistry students, as well as to create an atmosphere of learning and enjoyment. So basically what this means, right, is that I won't sugarcoat it. Biochemistry is one of the most tough, rigorous, but most rewarding fields out there. Um, it will put, it is a lot of work, um, but at the end of it, you'll have tons of fun, meet great people along the way, and you'll have so many opportunities. However, for you to get through this path, you're gonna need friends, you're gonna need resources, you're gonna need support. And that's what the Biochemistry Society really aims to do. And that is to join hands with all these different seniors that are from your fourth year, helping out first years, um, having faculty step in and try to help out um, with students trying to look for um, either career path goals, um, trying to get um, research labs, trying to get scholarships for in terms of your recommendation letters. All these things will really help you in your future. And that's what the Biochemistry Society really aims to do is to build a community. And so if you go to the next slide, I'll show you what we actually do. So we host uh, a multitude of events, um, starting off with the monthly liquid dynamics labs, which is basically more of a social gathering. Uh, we enjoy some pizza. We speak with um, some faculty. The faculty comes down to talk. You're there with fourth years. The first years speak the fourth years. Maybe some of the TAs that are gonna be working in the labs can help you out, explain to you, talk about some questions. It's basically more of a communal setting. Um, you get to really, get a look at what's coming up um, in the program, um, tips, which props to take, uh, which props we're looking for students to hire, all these types of things. They're more discussed during these liquid dynamic labs, which are hosted every month. And as you can see, like, we have some pizza and everything there is is a, is a more of a fun time type of deal. Uh, next off, we also have a Discord, which we host um, game nights. Over there on our Discord, we also have some study um, sessions and as well as some a little um, classroom type of deal where you can just pop in. And then if you need help, um, someone can see you that you're in these uh, breakout rooms and they can come in and they can just help you out or you can study together, you can listen to music together, you can do your own thing in the own little Discord world. Uh, next off, we also have our speaker series events. We actually hosted one a couple of days ago on Wednesday. Uh, we get uh speakers from all over the world to come speak uh this past wednesday we had dr johnson from uh the university of dalhousie she was a carleton alumni and suddenly she was studying biochemistry and she was basically going over the steps as to how carleton university's biochemistry program prepped her into a life into academia um how do you how you can become a professor um what steps does she take how you can apply for grants uh, what steps you need to take to get into graduate school, how you can talk with professors, all these type of things are kind of discussed 
um, at the speaker series. Uh, we have really cool guests coming in, such as like people who are working in the forensic labs for the RCMP. Um, we had Dr. Chandra, which is all the way out in India. He has his own uh, nonprofit to deal with uh, with optometry. So we have all types of um, people come in and just speak. And you get to learn some really cool light skills, build some connections, and you have these resources that you can go and email them, ask them for more opportunities. So that's another thing that the CCPS is really proud of doing. The next thing is that we're really um, involved in the I Love Science Week uh, program. And so we set up fun experiments. Uh, usually when we're in person, we help um, set up, um, we do sometimes some experience, uh, experiments in person. Um, however, because of the pandemic, we did some just like some home ones at home and just did it on our Instagram live. And so it's just some fun things to promote um, science. And we also do a tons of giveaways. Um, we do just some like gift cards here and there and promotions. Um, and finally, we are in the process of implementing, implementing a scholarship program to help biochemistry students in particular, um, especially those who are in need to um, receive some funding to help make their lives through Carleton a little bit easier than it is. But um, yeah, that's basically what the Biochemistry Society does. Um, it is definitely a fun way to get in, um, get involved with the community. And on top of that, you get CCR credits, which um, I'm not sure if anyone explained it to you yet, but they go on your transcript saying that, um, hey, I was involved with this program. Um, and basically it's really good for jobs. If, um, uh, professors want to take a look at your transcript and said, okay, should I hire this person or that person? It's basically showing that you're out there. It helps your chances of getting uh, scholarships. And basically you get to be involved in this community and also benefits you in the long run too, since it goes on your transcripts. So we're always looking for more members. So definitely check us out um, when you do decide to join biochemistry um, on our Instagram at Carlton CBS. And you can take a look at all the fun things that we do over there. Um, so make sure that you try to get involved as well when you get into university. Thank you so much, Urbaz, for speaking about your experience and your great society. There really are so many fun uh, and exciting things going on. Uh, and as he said, please do get involved when you join us. The more community you can have, the better experience you're going to have um, in any program. Um, excellent. So if we continue on, so what might, a, you know, an average week uh, in your life as a biochemistry student look like? Well, there will certainly be classes to attend. Um, there's going to be lots of these experiential learning events that we've been talking about. Um, down here on the bottom left of the screen, you can see a picture of another um, lab that you're likely to experience right off the bat in your first year. Um, this is one of the chemistry teaching labs known as the super lab. It's really quite uh, impressive. It's very modern. So many of these uh, fume hoods, one for each group and these workstations that feature, you know, each individual one has a computer and all the equipment that you'll need to carry out your experience experiment. So you'll be in there right off the bat. And again, we have an image of um, that third year biochemistry lab I was showing you. Um, and don't forget, right, you could have the opportunity to uh, be engaged in part time research with a professor uh, from as early as your first or second year. Um, so this is a picture of uh, our our professors in our department. Um, you can see that there's quite a lot of us and we're hiring new folks all the time. Um, everyone does really impressive uh, research and teaching. And uh, since we're gonna talk a little bit more about research right now, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and turn over my colleague uh, to my colleague, Shelley, Dr. Shelley Hepsworth, who is one of these uh, researchers in our department and another teacher that you might have uh, occasion to run into in our program. So here is Dr. Hepsworth. Thanks. Thanks, Alex. Um, yeah, you can call me Shelley. I'm one of the professors uh, in the biochemistry department. Uh, good morning to all of you. And I hope to give you a little tour through some of the research, the exciting research that goes on in the biochemistry department. We have about 30 professors in the Institute of uh, Biochemistry. Some of them are directly appointed to the Institute and others are cross appointed from the sister departments of either biology or chemistry. So I'm one of those folks that is cross appointed with biology. And this type of 
um, integration of professors from from different parts of of the university is really exciting because it, it does provide a huge reservoir of diversity in terms of teaching and research that students can benefit from. Can we have the next slide, Alex? One of the things that I really love about the Institute of Biochemistry is that the research that takes place is not just human focused. It really spans very broad areas of biochemistry ranging from quite diverse organisms like plants. For example, uh, Dr. Owen Rowland, who studies plant biochemistry and natural products uh, to animal systems and cell culture. An example would be Dr. Jenny Bruin, who works on diabetes. Um, and over to insects, for example, Dr. Heath McMillan, who works on insect cold tolerance and insect physiology, not to mention folks who study um, uh, fungi and microbes. Some of the research also delves into very specific aspects of biochemistry. For example, drug design. Uh, an example would be Kyle Bigger, who works on protein biochemistry and drug discovery, and I'll actually highlight some of his research later. And other folks who work on sort of environmental aspects of biochemistry, for example, Dr. Amy Rand, who works on um, environmental contaminants. So we have a very broad uh, base. And some of the topics, actually, there's lots of them that would really encompass what our research composes. You can see over there on the left-hand side of your screen, um, we cover very diverse areas. And one of the things that I'd love to highlight is just that undergraduate students are a very important part of our research teams. So when students first come to Carleton, um, you know, they'll be taking courses. And if they identify specific interest in area that they'd like to pursue, we always encourage them to contact their professors and find out if there's an opportunity to get involved, maybe initially as a volunteer in a research lab. That can lead to further projects, such as, you know, working in a lab for the summer and there's also a lot of opportunities as actual coursework to be part of a, a research professor's team. We have courses that are directed study courses where you can do a project, a bench project in a lab over the course of a term. Um, there are also courses that you can take where you do a literature review on a topic that you're interested in, um, coming up with a research proposal, and that can later lead to some research that you might actually undertake yourself as part of the capstone project, which is our honors thesis research bi uh, biochemistry 4908 course. So there's a right, quite a progression. Um, a few highlights here, for example, Dr. McMullen, whose research encompasses toxicology, environmental chemistry, and metabolism. He studies natural products, and by that we mean chemicals that are produced by, as secondary um, metabolites by plants and microbes. Some of these are toxins in the environment, and one of his specialty areas is looking at the toxins that are produced by blue-green algae or cyanobacteria. We know that sometimes our lakes and rivers are unsafe to swim in because of toxins produced by this. Um, and then another highlight would be Dr. Maria De Rosa, whose work encompasses bio-nanotechnology and biophysical chemistry. And she's an expert, a world expert in aptamers, which are nucleotide sequences, polymers that are related to DNA. And they fold up into these very specific structures that can be used as probes. And she's investigating how these probes, which bind to specific things, um, they detect specific um, metabolites produced by other plants or animals. These probes can be used, for example, for smart fertilizers or to specifically target certain cells in the body like cancer cells to deliver um, chemotherapies without hurting um, healthy cells. In my lab, I'm a plant developmental biologist and our work encompasses areas of biochemistry such as cell biology, developmental biology, plant biochemistry and also plant stem cell uh, biology 
And what we do is we, we use a model organism called Arabidopsis thaliana to understand the genetic and the biochemical basis of architecture traits that are important for crop yield. We also work on cannabis. And one of our recent projects is to be, look at developing seedless varieties of cannabis for the industry and also to increase the amount of minor cannabinoids that are produced by cannabis plants um, that have been shown to be important um, or possible therapies for the treatment of epilepsy. Um, and not, last but not least, I'd, I'd like to highlight some of the research in Dr. Kyle Bigger's lab. Kyle's lab studies um, protein methylation which is a relatively new kind of modification that has been identified. So when methyl groups are added to proteins, which are the machinery in our cells, this can alter their function quite dramatically and lead to disease states. So the bigger lab looks at these proteins and how they work, understands the network and, the, and how these proteins interact and also because um, when this system malfunctions, it can lead to diseases, including cancer. His group is also looking at um, discovering inhibitor, inhibitors of these lysine methyl transferase proteins that can be used as novel chemotherapies. Um, so I thought what we would like to do now is perhaps give you a little tour through uh, Dr. Bigger's research lab so that you can sort of get a taste of, you know, what a research lab at our university looks like. Alex, you can go ahead and run the video. Are you still there, Alex? Hmm. Ah, oh, here it is. It, it is okay. It is running. I think maybe we're having a little bit of connection difficulty. Um, your speak, the sound has been breaking up, but um, let's see. Oh, well, there you can see some of the equipment is. in the bay. Continuing. Yeah, the research labs in the Nesbitt building have been completely renovated recently, so you'll be working in a very beautiful lab space. And there you can see some of the equipment that's lined up. There's some central bays, they're quite well lit. Uh, yeah. Alex, you can go to the last slide if you want. Apologies, folks. I'm not sure what technical difficulty we're having with the video <laughs> there. Yeah, the bottom line is that our, our undergraduates are encouraged to take an active part in the different research programs. They publish their research in journals, they present their research at conferences, and they have successful careers. So we are very proud of our graduates. And I'll turn over the last part of the talk back to Alex. Nice to meet you guys. All right. Thanks, folks. Um, and thank you, Shelley, for speaking about our research program. We really are so very proud of all of our accomplishments and the great contribution that our undergrads have had um, in that. And so we're here to help. We want to hear your questions. We want to answer your questions. If you have any um, concerns or comments or anything that you're wondering about, um, Shelley uh, and myself, uh, we're both, again, professors in the department. We are going to be in our booth so you can swing by and ask us those. We'll address a few in just a moment. Um, but you can also reach us if you have any questions or concerns after today. And so on the screen, you can see um, our email address. So biochem at carlton.ca will get you um, in contact with some of our administrators who, if they can't answer your question directly, will forward it on to the people who can. You can also see the link to our contact form there. Um, and you can see uh, some of the great folks who are, you know, at the core of our uh, program. So we have Dr. Tyler Avis, who is our director of our institute. We have our um, 
institute administrator, administrative assistant, and undergraduate administrator right here. So these are folks that you would be running into uh, quite regularly in our office as a student. We also have another professor in our department, Dr. Owen Rowland, who was mentioned a little earlier on uh, for his research contributions, but he's also acting as our undergraduate advisor right now. And so everyone is here and ready and willing to answer your questions should you have any. Um, and we really do hope that we will uh, see you in our program soon. I can't wait to have you in my classroom uh, and share my excitement for biochemistry with you. And so um, I think we've been doing a pretty good job of keeping up with the questions in the Q&A there. Um, but if you have any questions, please do make sure you go ahead and pop them in there. We'll be able to answer them for you. Um, I think the last one that I can see, uh, we had a couple about, you know, particular course selections, but the one that I don't think that has been answered was how has um, the pandemic affected classes? And so like most institutions, whether they were high schools or universities, initially everything did have to move to an online environment, but we are doing our best to move as much as we can back onto campus these days, you know, keeping safety at top of our mind. So most of this year, smaller courses, so that would include things like the lab work that you would be doing in your experiential learning have been happening in person, certainly keeping the option for online for folks who might have uh, particular situations that don't allow them to come to campus. Um, but as much as we can, we're inviting students back for those smaller group activities. Uh, right now, our big courses, so like the big lectures, have remained predominantly online. But we're taking small steps all the time to get more and more back on campus. And we're really excited to be back in the classroom um, with our students when we can and when it's safe for all of us to do so. Um, so are there... If I could just hop in on this, I just want to say that um, I'm currently um, like half in person and half like online. I uh, just to deal with the whole like social distancing and everything like that. Um, the really important classes like advanced organic chemistry, where it's like crucial for like the actual program, uh, those ones are in person, and you have the choice of doing it in person or online. They're both being streamed online as well as in person, and it's your choice if you like to show up. Um, to the in-person section. And if you do feel sick or if you feel one day, you know what, I'm not up for it, then you can also watch it online as it's being streamed. Um, for the practical biochemistry, so the actual in-person lab component, we are in-person. And it's really great because you have all these resources all to yourself. Um, I believe that Carlton's handling this pandemic really, really well. Um, usually we have tunnels that you have, have access to to go into the uh, uh, between classes and stuff, but those have been... Uh, closed because of the pandemics to avoid uh, um, you know con any contamination or uh, the close uh, due to like the very tight and small areas uh, and you do have to scan in into buildings whenever you enter them and they're really good of actual um, COVID protocols um, but as to actually getting an adequate edu edu education um, Carlton's definitely um, very well adapted to the pandemic. Thank you, Urbas. And I saw Shelly was sharing in the chat there that research labs are working in person. Um, so research is ongoing and those opportunities for getting a real life, you know, in person on the bench experience is very much a possibility right now. Um, so I, you know, we're making the very best of this. Um. Any other questions, folks? All right, well, thank you again so much for your attention and your time to join us. Um, I'll remind you again that both myself and um, Shelly will be available in the biochemistry booth from basically now once this is wrapped, once this session is wrapped up until noon. So if you have any questions, swing on by and we're happy to chat with you one on one or in small groups. Uh, but otherwise, thank you so very much for your time. And I look forward to seeing you one day on campus soon. Thank you. Goodbye. All right. Thank you, Molly.